What is for sure that Jerusalem has had no importance in Islamic history, except when foreigners ruled it. Now, um, watch this. Jerusalem only became holy in Islam about 50 years after their prophet Muhammad's death. And why did it become... I mean, the, what about that first Qibla business? That's not, uh, that wasn't during Muhammad's lifetime? Uh, no. Oh, really? Oh, excuse me. Okay. You're talking about on Jerusalem. I'm yes. sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, there was a reason for that. The reason... Qibla means the Hebrew word lekabel. The Qibla is where is the prayer direction and where was the prayer received. The reason at first when Muhammad was uh, trying to propagate his new religion, he wanted the acceptance of the Jews. And so what he did was the first prayer direction was Jerusalem and the first fast was the 10th uh, day of the first month. When the Jews rejected him, which was later because that was in Medina, uh, because the first he, he fled Mecca for Medina, then came back to uh, Mecca. Um, when the Jews rejected him, he all of a sudden had revelations from a Muslim point of view, which said, no, the prayer direction would be Mecca. This is all later, we're not really sure. What we are sure is that um, it, you know, there, in all of the early coinage uh, of, of the Muslims in the first 50 years, there's no mention of Muhammad. There's no mention of Allah. They, they, there's no mention of the word Islam. They were just called Mu'minim, which means Ma'minim, believers. That's how they called themselves. The whole idea of, they didn't have their narrative straight. And that only became straight afterwards. Now, why did Jerusalem become important? The pilgrimage was to Mecca. And when it went to Mecca, there was a revolt in Mecca, and Damascus became the center, uh, slightly beforehand, of Islam, or of what was to become Islam. Mm -hmm. And if people went to Mecca on the pilgrimage, they would be supporting the opposition. It's, his name is Ibn Zubair. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, they would be supporting the opposition. So they needed, Middle Easterners love pilgrimages. There are, for example, there's in, in Hebrew there's the word Chag. Sure. And Chag means pilgrimage three times a year to Jerusalem, where you circumambulate the, the holy places. Right. This is how it was understood. Hajj, a J in Arabic, mm. is a G in Hebrew. Yep. So the, the pilgrimage to Mecca, so they needed a new alternate pilgrimage site. And what they found themselves in war with was not the Jews. What they found themselves at war with was Christianity. And the first in the, over the Dome of the Rock is a vicious anti-Christian polemic that God doesn't bear children, and he, nothing is born to him, and he does not father. And he has only one essence, meaning monotheism. Right. There's nothing about the Jews, mm -hmm. but they're also in early Islam, when they again didn't have their narrative first, there were about five families that the Muslims had anointing, putting oil on the rock. It's almost a Jewish ceremony. Mm -hmm. And then when they got their narrative correct, then it became against the Jews. It is very, very unclear in early Islamic history. Many, many things are. If you take non-Quranic sources, and the first written version of the Quran we have is about a hundred years later, and when you have an oral society, and when oral society language, everything changes very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, they, they, they just didn't have their narrative together. So what we do is there are non-Muslim sources who describe these tribesmen coming out of the desert. And they at first, in fact, thought that they, that, the, that is, these non-Muslim sources thought they were Jews. Why? They come to Jerusalem, and the first thing they want to see is the Temple Mount. Why? Who else would want besides the Jews? It was a, it was a trash heap um, under the Byzantines. And um, that's where the story comes in early Islam, Ka'b al-Akhbar, who was a Jewish convert to Islam, who tradition has in the earliest, um, um, it's Tabari is the source, 
who, who was with Omar, the guy who conquered Jerusalem, and he says, and this proves that Jerusalem is not a holy place, and I'm sorry I don't have a map to explain this, they're up on the Temple Mount, and, and Omar, the, the Caliph, says, uh, who's just conquered Jerusalem, he says, Kaab, it's time to pray. Where should we pray? And this is all written. Again, it's written a hundred years later because we don't have anything earlier from the Muslims. And Kaab said, if we pray from the north end of the Temple Mount, of the Mount with that, we can pray to the Qiblatain. Ain in Arabic is dual, means the two prayer directions. You will, by that definition, go pray towards both Mecca, which of course you're supposed to, and the um, uh, the Jewish temple, the two, to which Omar says, you he accused them of Judaifying mm-hmm. of this. You said you are no longer a Jew. You are acting like your Jewish roots. We will go to the southern area. Why the southern area? Because when you bow down and pray as you're supposed to, what goes up at the Temple Mount? Your rear end. That is not a positive thing that you do by showing your rear end mm-hmm. to what was the Temple Mount. I mean, I've seen, the, uh, obviously, the pictures of thousands of, of Muslims doing that. I did yes. not know that was an intentional part of it. It isn't the, uh, today, right, but, but it, it, was, it then. was then. That's amazing. It was to say there is only one prayer direction. It's Mecca. Mm-hmm. And that's why Omar insisted that they pray from the south. So that's why the it's Al-Aqsa even better. Mosque was, con- was constructed on the south part of the mountain. The whole idea is, it says... That the that um, that Muhammad went up to heaven to receive the prayers, and he went to Masjid, which is the place of prostration, which is where you bow down, where you pray, Al Aqsa, which means the furthest. Now, what is interesting? There was Masjid Al Adna, uh, Ad, uh, Ad, Adna, excuse me, Masjid Al Adna and Masjid Al Aqsa. Adna means the closer mosque and the further one, and both are within about 20 kilometers. Uh, what is that? About 12 miles of Mecca. Right. They had nothing to do. The idea sure. of in the future, in the commentaries, it was nothing more than Judaification. How among other things do we know this? Um, the intellectual godfather of the Wahhabis, Wahhabis are the people who run the Saudi government. Right. That's, they only exist from about the 1770s. We're talking 636, 637, 638, that time frame. Um, what happened was that um, the guy who was the, the intellectual godfather of the, um, uh, uh, of the Wahhabis, whose name is Ibn Taymiyyah, he lived in Damascus in the late 1200s, early 1300s. He is uh, the most, one of the most extreme of the extreme um, uh, scholars. And he makes it very clear he hated Jews he hated a lot of people and he hated Jerusalem he said Jerusalem is nothing more than the Judaification of Islam there are only two holy cities in Islam Mecca and Medina everything else is not and he hated the idea of uh, of, of, of Jews a very very smart man and it's all there in black and white so if he hated Jerusalem, how come the Saudis are so pro-Jerusalem? The answer is two things. Number one, they're afraid. And as a senior Saudi prince told a friend of mine many years ago, who wrote a speech for his senator boss in the United States, um, he said, uh, uh, we heard the Saudi prince told my friend, he said, we know that you wrote uh, the, the, this Zionist speech or whatever. He said, and why did you do this? This was in Saudi Arabia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my friend said, you know, to tell you the truth, we had, I, in doing the research for the speech, I got the impression that 90% of the money you give to the Palestinians is bribe money, so they won't hurt you. To which they argued. But as they were walking out, see, the Arabs also do quietly appreciate honesty. day. Mm-hmm. As walking out, the Saudi prince puts his hand on my friend's shoulder and said, you are absolutely wrong. It's not 90%. It's 100%. <laughs> um, yeah, but they can't be caught because if they're not supporting the 
It's a Muslim cause. Look at the Saudi flag. It has in Arabic letters. It says there. The, it's basically the Shema Yisrael. It is the. It is the, 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 the phrase of witnessing. There is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is His messenger. And what is underneath that? A sword, <laughs> because you conquer by the sword. And um, they cannot be seen as um, uh, being willing to give in on this thing. Because they can do quietly anything, but they can't be seen to this. Again, I was told by my Iraqi friends when we found the Jewish archives, get this out of here as soon as possible, because if it became known publicly, they could be um, uh, accused of God knows what. But if it had gotten, gotten out beforehand and it then became public afterwards, they could blame the Jews or the Americans, whatever, for having stolen it. But their honor would be saved. And that's the same story with the Saudis. Mm -hmm. Very good.